Hey, Peter Beattie here with a quick tutorial for you. Uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, I posted in the Video Revolver Facebook group, I asked you, or I asked the members in there, um, if they were interested in a video tutorial showing how I design my product e-covers. And then I posted uh, an e-cover uh, for Instant Video Templates 4, uh, version 4 that I had just created before I made this post. And basically just asked everyone if they were interested in me doing a video tutorial showing how I make these e-covers. Because I do all of my e-covers, my product covers, by myself. I do not outsource it. Uh, it's something I enjoy doing and I don't mind doing myself. And I've made quite a few of them. And I'm always getting questions from people all the time. Who designs your covers? Who? You know, how do you make these? Please let me know. So uh, I made this post. A bunch of people said they wanted to learn how I did it. I know it's taken me almost four weeks to make this video. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. I uh, just got kind of tied up with the Instant Video Templates version 4 launch. So finally got some time here to make this video. So sorry to everyone who left a comment here for taking so long. So how do I design my e-covers like this one right here? Well, to start off, I use Photoshop. So you're going to need some type of photo editing software. Uh, I do recommend Photoshop, although you probably could use GIMP. I'm not sure. I haven't used GIMP in years, um, but that's a free photo editor software. Uh, but really, if you can, use Photoshop. Um, I use Photoshop, and uh, the next most important piece of the puzzle is a Photoshop Action Script software called Cover Action Pro. Uh, now, this is Cover Action Pro. Uh, and you can um, purchase any other type of e-cover creator um, that is uh, also run by Photoshop Action Scripts. It doesn't have to be Cover Action Pro. All you have to do is go on Google and search for Photoshop Action Scripts product covers or something like that, and you'll find some similar products. Even if you go on GraphicRiver.net and just type um, software box cover. Then you'll find a bunch of different, um, you know, mock-up mock-ups that you can use. Like I can download any one of these right now, and make a product cover using any one of these templates. Um, and they're only, you know, four bucks here, twelve bucks here. So whatever you want to do, just go into Graphic River, go into Google, whatever. And basically, you're looking for a product cover or a product box mock-up template. I just happen to use Cover Action Pro because it's what I've always used, and I already have it. So, there's a particular template that I use in Cover Action Pro to create the box here. And also, you see here, this is the what I call the group e-cover for Instant Video Templates version 4. We've got the box, and then we've got two monitors here, and then we've got 14 different video player um, graphics here that represent the 14 templates. So basically what I did to create this image is I used the different Photoshop actions inside Cover Action Pro and other cover creators to create one, two, three, four different types of cover images. And then I basically pulled them all together into one image inside Photoshop. So what I want to do for you is, you know, I want to show you exactly the exact process I go through for creating these box covers here. And I figure the easiest way for me to do that would be to just create, um, a, you know, create a new box from scratch. So um, we are going to be releasing Instant Video Templates version five sometime early 2015, probably late January. Um, and I have not designed a cover for that, so I figure why not we design? Why don't we just design that cover right now? You know, you can learn from watching me do it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got Photoshop opened up here, and what you want to start off with. Uh, before you do anything, is you need to load up the, the the action script that you're going to be using to cre to create your e-cover. Now, again, I'm using Cover Action Pro, so I'm going to load up the Cover Action Pro uh, Photoshop action scripts. If you decide to purchase one of the other um, product box templates from, you know, like Graphic River or something like that then those will come with instructions on how you can load those up and customize them. It's pretty similar to what I'm going to do right now. So what I have is I have Cover Action Pro, and I'm just going to go over here to the play icon on the right side of my Photoshop here. 
And what I want is I want the template called box one. Now, if we look over on Cover Action Pro, they have several different templates. And we'll go down to the boxes. So box one right here is the box that I use to make my cover box, my uh, box covers basically. So I'm going to load up that template. So I'm going to uh, go over here, find the play arrow, and um, if it's my first time using Cover Action Pro, then I'll need to load it up by clicking this arrow here and going down to Load Actions. And then I can go to my Cover Action Pro folder here, and then I can just go to Boxes, um, Software Boxes, and I can load up Box 1 by double-clicking it there. I'm not going to do that because I already have it. So then you'll end up, once you do that, you'll end up with a little menu here that says Box 1. So it says Step 1, Create, Step 2, Render. So you click on Step 1, and we'll click this play button down here. And what that's going to do is it's going to run a series of commands inside Photoshop to create the flat, uh, all the flat panels to, that make up the box. And then you just have to add your graphics onto these panels. Now, what I do every time I start a new template is I basically take the last one that I created and I modify it to to create my new template. And basically, I'll, I just start out with um, a new Photoshop document that is the size of, I usually go to new, I go to file, new, and I, under preset I choose US paper and then I make it eight and a half inches wide by 11 inches tall, 300 DPI resolution or 300 pixels per inch, and then I click OK. And then I end up with a blank white screen like this. You're going to be starting from scratch but basically what I do is I have this template at that size that I modify each time. So let's go ahead and modify this template. And then once we get the this looking how we want, then I can load it up into Cover Action Pro and we can create the 3D version of it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to decide on a few things to make our cover. Number one, we need to decide on the color scheme. Okay, we need to have a color scheme in mind, what we want, an idea of what we want our cover to look like. Um, do we want it to be yellow and blue? Do we want it to be orange and black? Do we want it to be, you know, white with light blue? You know, what are we looking for? So in your mind, imagine how you want your cover to look. And what I usually like to do is I like to look at other books I may have in my office or posters or pictures or things like that, or just go on the internet and just look at different covers that stand out to me. Um, and I'll say, hey, I like how that cover looks. I think I'll, I'll use that color combination in my own e-cover, right? So usually what I'll do is I'll go to my bookshelf, because I have a bookshelf or a bookcase, whatever you call it, with a bunch of books in it. And I will look at a book that I like the color combinations of. And I'll say, okay, I'll, make, I'll use this color combination uh, on my next e-cover. Because really the most time-consuming part of this for me is picking the colors, finding colors that match and actually look good. And I realize that if I try to pick colors myself, then it takes me a long time to create these covers. You know, I just sit there and I dwell on the combina the color combinations. So I just find a cover that I like that someone else has already created uh, as far as color combinations go, and then I just roll with that. I just use that in my own template. So the first thing you need to decide on is what color scheme you're going to go with. Um, and the general look that you're going after. A general look, basically that means do you want the title on the on the top like this, like I have here, do you want the title in the center, do you, you know, what are you looking for? So basically just have a, somewhat of an idea in your head of what you want, want your cover to look like. Right now before we start, I n have an idea of what I want my new cover to look like. First of all, it's going to say Instant Video Templates version 5. Um, we're going to use a different font. We want it to look different than the version 4 cover. And the color scheme I'm going for is kind of a bright electric blue along with a, um, a, a white and light gray or maybe even some carbon fiber. Um, I, I recently bought a new picture um, to hang up in my office because we moved into a new place. I wanted to hang up, get some new pictures to hang up in the office. And uh, one of the new pictures that I ended up buying on Amazon, I'll actually go ahead and show you. So this is the actual picture that I ended up buying from my office. I'm actually looking at it right now. And it's just a picture of a McLaren supercar. 
And I just like the color of this car. I really like the way the blue um, just sticks out above the, the light grays and the metalish looking background, if you will. So I want to use a similar combination in this new cover. So this is my inspiration for color in this new cover. Usually what I'll do is I'll find the look, you know, an existing book cover or a DVD cover or even a movie poster or something like that. And then I will find the color combinations that I like there and apply them to what we're doing. But in this case, I have something else that I want to use as inspiration. So we're going to use bright electric blue, whites, and maybe some grays and carbon fiber. Okay. Maybe even throw some green in there. You can see a little hint of green right here. So, um, you know, I have that down. So I'm going to write that down here. Color scheme, we're going to use bright electric blue, white, um, grays, black, carbon fiber, and maybe even some minty, gr minty green. Okay, so those are the colors. The general look, I'm going to go ahead and keep the, the title at the top. So title at top. And then I'm going to um, probably I'm going to display some type of laptop of some kind, uh, a vector image of some of a laptop with my templates on the screen of the laptop. So I'll say vector laptop in center, IVT5 graphics on screen. And then I want to have a hand pointing at laptop or character standing next to laptop smiling so that's the general idea i'm going after so this step right here there's this one little simple step right here whoops i did not mean to do that this one little simple step right here just saved us a bunch of time so if you don't get this stuff down, if you don't decide on the colors you want to use, how you know the general look you're going after with your covers, you're going to be screwing around in Photoshop all night long trying to figure out what you want. So it's always good to take some notes on what you're trying to get, basically, as a finished product. So we have that here. The hard work is done. Now all we have to do is just create this thing. So I'm going to drag this off the screen, and let's just get to work. So we have a template that I use every single time. Again, you're probably going to be starting from, from scratch. Um, but again, I just used the last template I created to make the next one. And uh, basically, uh, now we're just going to modify this, this font here. So I want it to look a little bit different than the last one. So what I'm going to do now is, just, is I'm just going to experiment with some different fonts in Photoshop until I get a font that I think looks cool yet that is different enough from the uh, last one. And basically, I'm just going to go through some fonts here. So I've chosen my fonts. I may change this uh, before we decide to move forward. But I'm going to use the Kelvin font. Let me just go ahead and change this one up here to the Kelvin font. And that one looks hideous. So let me pick something else for that top one. Go ahead and we'll try this one maybe. See what this looks like. No, that's a little bit hard to read. You never want your fonts to be hard to read. You always want them to be easy to read. It's okay to play around with different fonts. But you always want them to be easy to read. So this is a pretty good font. It looks a little bit similar to the last one. But that's okay. But it doesn't really match this font down here, this Calvin font. So what we'll do is we will try to find um, a font that matches the top one better. That's another thing that you have to be aware of. You always want your fonts, if you have multiple lines of fonts, you always want them to match each other. When you, when you look at them, you want them to be pleasing to the eye. Okay, You don't want people squinting or or you know, having a hard time understanding what the font reads. The title sh should stand out and be instantly recognizable when they look at the cover. So I think we've got a good start here. Um, let's go ahead and do something weird with the text. Let's go ahead and just angle it maybe a little bit. And maybe we can scale it up a little bit more. Again, I'm just doing all this on the fly. None of this is planned. So I might change things a few different times. 
So now we want, what I like to do now is just delete the old graphics that we're not going to use. So get rid of all that old, those old icons. We don't need them. And usually when I make a cover, I like to have, you know, some type of background for the text, for the title basically. So right now I want to have some type of background here. I'll just have, create this little box like so. And maybe we'll put that like that. So now what I want to do is I want to put a light, very light colored um, carbon fiber onto the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the background color to white. Okay, now I'm going to go on my computer and find a carbon fiber pattern. So I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for on my computer. So I just went into Google and I typed white carbon fiber. So we're just going to search for it in Google. Um, I like this one right here right off the bat. But what we're going to do is we're going to search for, we're going to adjust our search settings by clicking on search tools. And we're going to change from size. We're going to make sure it's larger than 800. That way we can get an image that is large enough for what we're trying to do here. And we'll open that one in a new tab. We will open this one in a new tab. And I just spot the ones I may like. And then I'll just look at them, you know, at their original sizes. And once I decide on what I like, I will download it and use it. So this one's too small. We can't really use it. This one is pretty big. Could probably use that. This one is massive. That's what it looks like when you're zoomed in. This one is just really not carbon fiber. It's just like a white background. This one is on a stock photo site. We don't want that one. Let's go ahead and try this large one right here. So now we've got it downloaded to our computer. Now we're going to go open it. And there it is. And now we're just going to copy this. Control C. We'll go back to our eCover design here. And we're going to paste it over the white background by doing Control V on our keyboard. And now we're just going to play with it until we get it looking how we want it to here. I'm just going to scale it down. The pattern doesn't look bad the way it is actually, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit so that it's just a very faint background. So we can see the white background below shining through. So already I'm liking the nice simplistic look of this cover. And what I want to do now is I want to add the icon or the laptop icon here. What I like to do in my covers is I like to keep them simple. I like to have a nice, simple background, uh, a nice um, title that stands out, and then one icon that kind of represents the product. Okay, if you look at all my e-covers, I'll go ahead and show you some examples here on my, on my website. If I look at my videorevolver.com and I go in my products page, if you look at all my e-covers, they're all pretty much the same. Or they follow the same design format. You know, we've got the title, an icon, and a nice background, a faint background. Title, icon, 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 background. So you can see they all follow the same simple uh, format. And I do that because I find that if I try to overcomplicate these e covers, they just they take more time to create and they don't look as as nice as the simple ones. People like simple simple things. They don't want to look at an e cover and be totally blown away with fifty different things on it. You know, because all we need is a title, an icon that represents what we're selling, and a nice uh, light fainted background. And every one of my e covers follow that principle. So. Let's go ahead and bring in a laptop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the graphics from 
Instant Video Templates version 4 to make this icon. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to Browse. And I am using the Work From Home template. So if you bought Instant Video Templates version 4, you should have this template. I'm going to go into the Graphics folder. I'm going to the Objects folder. And, oops, I thought this one had a laptop in it. Let me go ahead and find the one that has the laptop. So it's actually the computer repair template. I was looking at the wrong template. So we'll go ahead and use this one right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag that into this e-cover. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an image of our instant video templates, templates on here. Before I do that, I want to scale this up a little bit. We may play with this later, but... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a background from one of the templates in Instant Video Templates version 4. I'm going to superimpose it on this screen here and um, go from there. So let's go ahead and go back to File, Open. And I'm just going to um, choose one of the templates. I think I'll choose... They'll choose the Motorsports template. And I'll go to the Backgrounds. And again, if you have IVT4, you should have all these. I'm going to use this one here, which is a mechanics work area for a motorcycle mechanic. I'm going to copy that background. I'm going to paste it right into this template here. I'm going to slightly rotate it so it kind of matches the angle of the laptop. like so. Now I'm going to scale this down a little bit. So it doesn't have to be perfect. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the opacity of this image down a little bit so I can see the laptop below it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the laptop. I'm going to go to the magic wand tool and I want to select this laptop background, which I can do just by clicking the, ma the uh, magic wand tool and clicking. Now what I want to do is I want to reselect this background image, turn the opacity back up so I can see it, and you can see that I've selected this area here of this background now. But what I want to do is I want to select everything outside the screen because I want to delete it. So now I'm going to go to select, inverse, and now we have the background right on the laptop. The next thing I want to do is I want to add um, some objects and maybe some characters on here. So I'll go back to File, Open, and we'll go to Objects. I will go ahead and choose this motorcycle here. And we'll just kind of play around with it until we get it where we want it. I'm going to rotate it or flip it. And we'll just put it on this little stand right here because this is like a motorcycle lift. So the, the motorcycle obviously belongs on the lift. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a character. So we'll go back to the graphics. And we will use this, this mechanic guy here. We'll drag him in. And we will put him like so, like that. So now we have our laptop with our IVT graphics on it. Granted, these graphics are from version 4, but that's okay. Uh, we don't have version 5 created yet. But the next thing I want to do is I want to add some type of table to the background here. So it looks like this laptop is sitting on something. So I'm going to create a new layer, drag it below the laptop, and at this point I'll just select a new area on the screen. I'll go to my fill tool here, my paint bucket tool. I will select my foreground color. I'll make it some type of brownish color. Let's see what this does here. That looks okay, but I don't really like that color. Let's try black. No, that doesn't look good. And again, I'm just playing around with this till I get it to where I want. Maybe we'll use minty green. 
That's where the green can come in, I guess. There, that looks good. Just to kind of break up the background a little bit. Uh, next one, um, I want to change... Actually, I want to add a character here that's kind of... Or a hand that's pointing at the laptop. So let's go back to File Open. And I'm going to use one of the hands from the Explainer Video Toolkit. Let's see, we'll use this hand here. Click and drag that right in. And this hand is smaller than what we need. But this image that we're working with here, this Photoshop document, is massive. So by the time we save it, if we scale anything up, it will not look pixelated because the image that we're going to be saving it at, or the image size we're going to be saving this image at, is going to be small enough where stuff will not look um, scaled up or pixelated. The last thing I want to do is I maybe want to add like a character's face here or something. So let's bring in a couple characters and just have them standing on the table or something. Let's bring in the computer repair guys. Let's bring in this guy here, our IT guy. And we'll put him like so. Maybe scale him down a little bit. We'll bring in one more. Let's bring in uh, this girl here, which is from our work from home template. And I gotta delete something here or close some of these windows. And we'll put her like over here somewhere. There. That looks pretty cool. We can also copy this hand here to make it look like there's two hands typing. Like that. That looks kind of cool. So now we have a nice little simple cover. So this one's starting to get a little crowded. I wouldn't add any more to this. Otherwise, we could risk overcrowding the cover and really distracting from the title, which is what we do not want to do. Um, I can see that the title looks a little bit smaller than what I'd like. I want this. I would like it to stand out a little more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play around with that a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to scale up this title here a little bit and maybe separate the version 4 from the title. Maybe we can get away with that. Maybe we can't. So let's try this. Instant video templates. And now I'm not sure if I like the angle, so let's rotate it back. So sometimes I will get to the point where you know I've spent the whole time creating the cover in a certain way and I'll, at the end I'll find out I don't like it like that. And that's totally okay, that's normal. That's just part of the design process. So if you find yourself going back and changing things multiple times, that is to be expected, obviously. So instant video templates, now let's see if we can add the version four, like right here or something. Because I like how the text looks like this now, you can kind of read it a little bit better. Let's see if we can add a version 4. To the middle of the screen. That doesn't look bad, but I think we should use a different font here. So let's see if we can find a different font to use. Maybe something like handwritten or something like that. Let's see if we can find something. Not sure I like that. Calvin, is that Calvin font that we tried to use earlier? 
can actually roll with that, I think. That doesn't look bad. We could we might change it, who knows. But I think we'll roll with that for now. Let's play with the color really quick. It's not really standing out as much as I'd like. There we go. That might be better. So let's go ahead and roll with this just for now. I may change this here. It just may take some time for me. You know, I may have to sleep on it and tomorrow I'll come back at it. Um, sometimes that helps if I can't figure out something. I will leave it alone for the day and just come back the next day and instantly you know, get it to where I want it. Um, this looks okay, probably on a scale from one to 10, I probably like it about a six, um, but I do want to do something else with it. We'll just do it later. Right now, let's call this template good. We'll go ahead and save it. Now it is time to turn this into a software box. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to this template here that we created with uh, Cover Action Pro. And now we're just going to drag in everything we just created. Delete the layers you do not need. Let's drag everything we just created right over in there. So basically select all the layers on the right. Then you can just click and drag. And it's not going to be perfect, so you're going to have to resize and move things around. So now we're just going to resize this a little bit. Okay, so let's move that down. So you can see where the backgrounds kind of don't really fill the space. So now we're gonna just have to do some minor tweaking. And that's to be expected because it's not the same size as what we started out with. So now let's go select these backgrounds and we'll just click and drag them over. And right now we just wanna fill the front panel don't worry about the sides here in a minute. So these are all the layers that make up the background. The white carbon fiber, uh, the table that we made. And we'll tweak these characters a little bit so they're not so close to the edge. All right. Let's move everything up just a little bit. All right. So now we have to do, whoops, I almost forgot the title bar. Let's get that. And of course the video revolver bar at the top here. All right, so we're good there. Let me delete this little bit right here. So we basically want our design to fit onto the front panel here, which is separated by lines. Um, now I want to delete the edge of this hand. There. So then now we're pretty much done. Now we can just need to add the uh, graphics to the side and the top if we want. We can keep this really simple and just fill that with a solid color. So what I like to do is I like to pick one of the other colors from the cover design. Use it there. We can do the same thing over here. We can actually make this uh, white to make it stand out a little more. And what we could also do is we could also carry over that white carbon fiber layer over here as well. So I'm just actually just going to copy that because it will look messed up if we stretch it. 
So I'm going to control J, copy that over to here. There. Now what I like to do at this point is I like to fill this area here with the logo, a smaller version of it, and then some dummy text. So let's go ahead and grab the logo. We will duplicate all the layers that make up the logo. We'll select them all and we will go to duplicate layers. Now we can move them over here. Now we want to rasterize the text, or rasterize type. So we'll right click on all the layers, rasterize type. And then we can merge them. Uh, merge all these layers into one layer. So now we can treat them as one object like so. So now we can scale down, get this right in there. There we go. Now I want to do the final step, which is adding some dummy text here, just to make it look more like a real box. We'll select the text tool. We will just draw a little box like that by clicking and dragging. And now we can just fill this with some dummy text. I'll go to my Lorem Ipsum dummy text maker, which is a Chrome extension. And now I'll just go ahead and control V, paste the text in there. Can't see it because it's white, so we'll change the color to black. And there's our cover. So now let's go ahead and do the final step of the action um, action script. We'll go back to the Photoshop action scripts, click on step two, render. Now we will click play and let Photoshop do its thing. And depending on how new your computer is and how much memory it has and the graphics card and stuff, this process could take anywhere from 10 seconds to five minutes. Totally depends on your system. And there's our new cover. What I like to do now is just turn off the background, right click on one of the layers, and go to Merge Visible. So now I have a single layer here. And then I can just go to File, Save for Web. And I can save this as a transparent PNG image, PNG-24, with transparency turned on. And we'll turn down the size to about 1,500 pixels wide, so we have something more manageable. And we will save this somewhere. We'll just call it eCover Box. And we'll go find that and we'll open it up here. And here's the image we just made right there. So, pretty cool looking uh, eCover graphic. Um, and that's how I create my e-covers. Uh, that whole process took us about 35, 40 minutes, and that's because I was talking and, and you know, kind of distracted a little bit. But if I was doing this myself, it probably would have taken about a half hour. And um, I would say that's well worth it. It's something I enjoy doing. It allows me to sit back and relax and, you know, listen to music or watch Netflix while I do some graphics work. It's something I don't mind doing. And if you like doing stuff like this on your own, um, this is how I do it. Hopefully you got something from this video. Um, at the very least, maybe some inspiration on designing your next cover. So I hope you enjoyed this video, that you have other ways you can use the Instant Video Templates products aside from in your videos. You can use them to make product covers like this, website banners, um, anything you can dream up. So hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in uh, the next one.